Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Few True Heels podcast. Today it's just the Few True Heel. It's just me. It's just the best of the realm. I'm your favorite anyways, right? I'm the one, my opinion matters the most, clearly, since I'm the only one here. Uh, Kim, Random Grenades, was here. She actually had a run out. Uh, Brian Man had some personal stuff come up. And of course, it's still football season, so Brooks wasn't able to make it. He'll be back very soon, though. We're going to have some really special podcasts lined up for when he does get back. In the meantime, last night was hell in a cell. And good God, was it hell. We had some incredible matches. And I'm going to go ahead and just get right into it, just like they did. Um, I do want to mention, you know, Gable and Jordan won the, in the pre-show. Um, that's pretty obvious that they were going to win. I love the hype bros. But... <laughs> I, I don't know where they fit, and maybe they need to be somewhere else. Or maybe they'll get a push further down the line. Both of those guys are really good. They both deserve it. Uh, maybe just not right now, because Gable and Jordan have something really special. And uh, hopefully they're not on the pre-show next time. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying it's special, but they're on the pre-show. Um, all of us predicted this, so we're all tied at one at this point. Um, I am keeping track of points, basically. And you can find the original predictions on our Facebook. That's facebook.com slash futurevillains. Um, so the show got off to a great start. We had a Hell in a Cell match to kick things off. It was the New Day, Big E, and Xavier Woods with Kofi Kingston on the outside looking in versus the Usos. And if you listen to the show, you'll know that we haven't exactly been the biggest fan of the Usos. I still don't really like the thug gimmick. Kim even pointed out, because, you know, she's a very, we say we're casual viewers, but uh, she typically works on Sunday, so she doesn't even get to watch wrestling. At least doesn't get to watch pay-per-view. She watches the clips with me sometimes. And, uh, she's like, wow, they've changed a lot. And they have. They really have since the original... You know, the Samoan warrior gimmick. And uh, I do like their music a bit more now. Uh, they had some excellent promos on Talking Smack. I'm starting to like them a little more. I really am. And this match... This match really cemented them for me. In being a really great tag team. And uh, I know, guys. I know, so I'm, you're talking about me at the end. Saying, oh, I don't need you. And we've been here five years and or however long it's been. I think it's been more than five years, quite frankly. But they're finally in a place where... And it's funny because they're finally in a place where I like them. And they're done with their feud with the New Day. Or at least they should be. Um, with the New Day. Wow. I did not know... They could be so brutal. They beat the shit out of the Usos. This was one of the most tense tag team matches I've ever seen. At one point, they had one of the Usos in the corner of the cell and used kendo sticks to wedge them into the corner to make like a caddy corner of just him. He was stuck. He was in prison. He was in Uso Penitentiary. And it looked brutal. And then they beat the hell out of him. They're, they had a rainbow kendo stick. Uh, there were so many great matches in, in the spots in the match. Um, at one point, the Usos were outside and Big E just suicide dive right outside. Uh, not quite a Tope Suicida because I think it was through the middle rope. I think Tope Suicida is over the top one. Um... And it looked like he hit his head on that support beam. I really hope he's okay. He got up after that. But man. It looked brutal. It really did. Uh, they And by the way, they had their finishers called the Up Up Down Down? When does that thing? They even had the logo on the tights? Props to WWE for really... You know, being okay with Xavier doing that and being more than okay because of how much they're promoting it. Um, there was a spot where they killed the trombone, which I wonder, I can't help but wonder, is that a sign 
are they going to use the trombone less? Are they going to be more brutal? Because that's a side, a side of the New Day I would love to see. Um, we got a cowbell spot, because every match needs more cowbell. And, uh, yeah, and this match is going to go down as one of the best tag team matches of all time. My favorite spot, though, is probably when they, bu the Usos busted out the, uh, handcuffs. And they were longer than normal handcuffs. Is so they put them on Biggie and Xavier, and they kind of, they put them on Xavier, and then they kind of lifted him up on the turnbuckle from the outside, and hung him, hung his arms, and then they just proceeded to beat the shit out of him with kendo sticks. That, that was an amazing spot. Um, then we had, you know, the, the finish, there were some really weak super kicks, and it was like, oh, that's not good. Next thing you knew, what? Another great super kick. The Usos got some of the best super kicks. Watch it, Young Bucks. These guys are coming for you. But the Usos did end up winning. Go back and watch this match if you haven't seen it. It's really incredible. Uh, so none of us predicted the Usos to win. And I still stand by that. You know, the New Day up until this point, have been the incredible, way, way over back, a team. And they deserve to keep going, but the fight that the Usos put in in the Uso Penitentiary, because that's what this match should be called from now on, if they're ever in a, a Hell in a Cell match, it should be called the Uso Penitentiary match. Just saying. Hopefully it'll become a thing. Um, that's what it should be from now on. I loved it. Um, then we found out that Ty Dillinger was added. Actually, we found out in the pre-show. I found out right now. Ty Dillinger was added to the U.S. Championship match. So that's now going to be Ty Dillinger, Baron Corbin, and AJ Styles. The next match we had up, though, was Rusev versus Randy Orton. Now, if you don't know, uh, a while back at a pay-per-view, Orton got basically an instant win over Rusev. Very, very quick match. Sometime after that, Rusev got a very quick win over Orton. And then we had Rusev Day. And, and Orton, you know, typical wrestling fashion, crashed the party, beat up Rusev, and that was done. And now we have this match. And it was a solid match. Uh, Rusev looked really good against Orton. I don't, I don't know where this is going. I really don't. I like that Orton is putting over young guys. He did win, by the way. It was a solid match. Uh, we had a really neat RKO that was reversed into the accolade. And Rusev, God, he looked like he was wrestling real stiff against Randy. When he kicked him in the back, or rather stomped him in the back for the accolade, it looked real stiff. I don't know what the hell that was about. Good match, though. I just hope it builds to something. Uh, for, other than, like, I don't like you. I don't like you either. So, uh, Randy won. Uh, Brian and Kim were correct on that. So it's now me at one, Brian at two, Brooks at one, Kim at two. Next, we had the United States Championship match. And it was Baron Corbin, AJ Styles, and Ty Dillinger. And I do want to say, Corbin has new music. I really like his old music. I'll still listen to it. It's great. This new music is starting to grow on me. The video uh, package, all that, you know, the, st the stage dressings, all look better. The old ones were really badass with, like, the broken Apocalypse Road. I like this. I think this fits him a bit more. He needs to do something, though. He just kind of walks out, and he still does the whole head bow thing like he did with his old entrance. So it's like, oh, you have new music, but you're still doing the same shit. Like, I don't I don't understand. Um, he needs to look to somebody like Jinder Mahal, who has really an incredible entrance. Um, in this match, I'm not sure what they did differently. Maybe it's just making it a triple threat at the last second. 
and then putting on an incredible match, it's good to see the U.S. Championship treated like it's something important because that's not something that has happened for a while. We saw it with Cena, and of course we are seeing it with Styles, but it keeps having its dips. And it, it's a championship. It needs to be treated as important. And the fact that it's not sometimes is ridiculous. And I will say, this was also an incredible match. I don't know that Ty Dillinger needed to be in it, but we'll get to that in a second, because I think I know why. And I've been a Baron Corbin fan since NXT. He is going to be a WWE champion one day. I even personally told him that at one of the NXT shows we went to. I still believe that. He, he became a star in this match. He was chucking people. That deep six is such an incredible fucking move. He needs to start using the choke slam more. At one point, he yanked, uh, I believe it was AJ, off the top rope and did a double choke slam. They said backbreaker, but I don't know if... Maybe that's what he was supposed to do, but he didn't quite pull it off. That's okay, shit happens. But man, Corbin just looked great in this match. And most of the match felt like it was Baron Corbin versus AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger. Which I think is a big reason to why uh, Baron was added to this match. Or rather, Ty was added to this match. And I'm totally okay with that. The other reason I think they added Ty Dillinger to this match was because Baron Corbin pin Ty Dillinger and not AJ Styles. So that gives a reason for Ty to be pissed because AJ never beat him, but also Baron never beat the champion. So that creates a kind of extended feud. And a feud with these three guys after this match, totally okay with. Because this match was incredible. Uh, like I said, Corbin looked really great. Ty looked all right. Ty still looked kind of weak, which sucks. Um, by the way, I really think the crowd hates Corbin as much as he hates them. And God, I love that in a heel. Um, he's just, he's so great, and he's, he's so great in that character. And I feel like that might just be him, which is kind of funny. Um... But one thing about Corbin, and this is just a long rant about Corbin, um, the whole Golden Glove boxing thing, I really think they need to use that more. There are moments where, you know, uh, like an AJ or a Ty will fly at him, and he will just knock him the hell out. And that's when they mention the boxing thing. Um, but I feel like he could probably have better punches, or use more impressive punches, maybe like a haymaker or something. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe Baron just doesn't want to do that, and that's very possible. Um, maybe it's you know muscle memory. He doesn't want to hurt somebody. I have no idea. I'm talking out of my ass at this point. But the crowd even seemed to love Ty more than AJ. It was really interesting to watch the crowd in this match because AJ Styles is so over. People love him, and thank God for that because dude deserves it. But Ty Dillinger is going to be a big star one day. Baron Corbin, I feel like, is a big star now. Um, he gave a promo on Talking Smack that was fantastic. Baron Corbin is finally becoming the star we need him to be. And I love that. And the end of the match, <laughs> AJ hit uh, uh, Ty with his finisher. And then all of a sudden, Corbin comes in and literally kicks his ass out. <laughs> it was one of the funniest, but just such a fucking heel thing to do. He just, like, kicked him, and then, like, he, AJ fell into the ropes, and Corbin kicked him again. Just like, get out! Get out! Get out of my yard! Get out! And then he pinned Ty! And it was like, what the fuck? No! <laughs> You didn't earn this at all. What an asshole. What an asshole. But 
That's what happened. And Corbin loves it. He, the crowd was pissed. It was great. One of the best heel victories I've seen in a while. Um, Brooks was the only one that picked Corbin. I didn't for once. And so it's now me one, Brian two, Brooks two, and Kim three. Uh, Kim also picked Corbin. This is the best Corbin match ever. This is this needs to be the the blueprint for Baron Corbin matches. It was great. Next up, we had the women's championship match, and I gotta say I do love bef- this whole Hart family versus Flair family angle. It's really neat. Um, I feel like they have had Rick and, and Brett in their corners before already. But that needs to happen more, I feel like. Maybe bring in Rick more often. Well, I know he's very sick right now. Uh, get better Rick. Woo! And Brett's just kind of an asshole. I'm sorry if you like Bret Hart, but he is. Uh... And this match, you know, entrances are cool. Charlotte always has a great entrance. And, um, it was weird. It was sloppy. Natalia is so sloppy. And that's so weird to say that. And she's related to Bret Hart. But she's so sloppy. I hate watching matches with Natalia. And I used to be such an, a big Natalia fan. I hate watching it. it it's really bad. Um, and that being said, these two women have competed for every women's title. The Raw Women's D- Championship, the SmackDown Women's Championship, the Divas Championship, and the NXT Championship. That's cool. I mean, unfortunately, it's with Natalia. Charlotte is incredible. They did have, like, a good wrestling match. You know, Natalia going after the leg the whole time. We got to see a dragon screw. That's always cool. Um... Even with her her injury, as it were, Charlotte was changing up her move set. When she would do a suplex, she would do it off the one leg. When she would kick Natty, she would kick her with the one leg. Even when she went up for, uh, I believe, a moonsault, she was kind of hopping on one leg. That's a sign of a great wrestler. It really is. Um, and then it ended with Natalia kind of half-assed using a chair, which was just weird. And random. And, and Natalia was winning. So what the hell did she use a chair for? I don't understand. It was stupid. This was by far the lowest point of the show. It was just dumb. I'm pissed. This is not where we want women's wrestling to be. This is a step back. We need to go towards Sasha and Charlotte's feud or Bailey and Sasha, or just anything Alexa Bliss does, just get, get Natalia out of here. I hate saying that. Fuck, I hate saying that. But Natalia is a problem. It's she was good during the whole divas thing because she was like the only good one. Get rid of Natalia, bring in Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox is great. Get rid of Natalia, bring in freaking Brie Bella or Nikki Bella. They're better than her. That's insane to say. There's no universe that should exist. And Natalia's a bad wrestler. Natalia Hart. Night Art. Whatever. God damn, that pisses me off. Alright, who, who, who picked? Uh, so at this point we have me at two. I picked Charlotte. Brian picked Charlotte. Brooks did not. And Kim picked Charlotte. Um, Char- I mean, Charlotte technically won. She won by disqualification. Pile didn't change hands. Charlotte also seemed like she might be legitimately injured. If Natty legit hurt Charlotte, that's just going to make me hate her more. And that, that, uh, get rid of Natalia. Get rid of her. Do it now. So, luckily after that, we had a legit match. Jinder Mahal... Versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And listen. <laughs> if you listen to this podcast for a while. You'll know. And it happens off podcast. You know off microphone. Me and Brian get into it about Jinder Mahal. Because I don't give a fuck what you say. Jinder is a bona fide WWE champion. 
He is a star, and he is one of the best heels in a long time because of how pissed off people, you people get to the Maharaja. He's so good. He's just, he is everything a heel should be. He's old school meets new school, and it's just great. You can tell I like heels, especially when they're good. Uh, and and quite frankly, you know, everyone was upset. Like, oh, he was a jobber. He was brought in as a jobber. He's a jobber. He's a jobber. Well, motherfucker, you're a jobber till you're not. Triple H was the blue blood. He was like a fancy, you know, doing bows. And then all of a sudden, he was the game. And he was playing mind games. And then he was a champion. And then you had... Stunning Steve Austin. He was a Hollywood blonde. Dude was a jobber. Steve Austin, he's nobody. He's not going to go anywhere. And then he became, you know, John 316 says, blah, blah, blah. Well, Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. Right there, he just became a bona fide star. When Jinder Mahal won that battle royal, and then became the Maharaja and got the Singh Brothers. That was his Austin 316 moment. And, you know, look at The Rock. He was the doofy looking Rocky Maivia, the little goofy guy with the feather things on his shoulder. And then he changed his character to be kind of like Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal went from a boring nobody to the Maharaja, to the whole rich guy thing, to the incredible entrance, to. Being an asshole, having the Singh brothers help him out, and that's what has to happen. You have to have a dramatic change of character, and that's what happened here. So I don't understand why people are still so upset. And, you know, they had a solid wrestling match. It wasn't incredible. It was a good wrestling match. I was entertained. Um, the Singh brothers got thrown out, and then Jinder Mahal won shortly after. Jinder doesn't need the Singh brothers to win, people. He doesn't. He, they're there for insurance. Because you know what? That's what a heel does. Surprise! So, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. Get used to it. We're going to have Jinder for champion for a while. And for good reason, because he's good. You know, we have plenty of other good feuds going on. You don't... You know, everyone wants Kevin Owens and Shinsuke Nakamura and Ty Dillinger and AJ Styles. They want all these guys to be champion. It's just a storyline. You know, and right now, Jinder Mahal is one of the best things on SmackDown. Leave a comment if you disagree. I know you will. I'm right, though. I'm damn right. It's true. It's damn true. So, I predicted Jinder to win. Kim predicted Jinder to win. Brian and Brooks did not. So, Jacob 3, Brian 3, Brooks 2, Kim 5. Yeah, the one who doesn't usually watch wrestling has the most predictions right so far. Up next, we have the continuation of the feud between Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. The whole... Dolph Ziggler doesn't need an incredible entrance like Bobby Roode definitely does uh, because he's you know the best wrestler. And they put on a fantastic wrestling match. Um, and I gotta say, it's so great to see Bobby Roode on WWE TV. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned that before. But just every time I see his name, he just he was so great in TNA and he was the reason I watched TNA for a long time. And it's great to see a guy like that who deserves to be on TV, like AJ Styles. It's just awesome. Thank you, WWE, basically. Um, and they put on a really solid wrestling match. And uh, one thing I, I didn't notice before, has Dolph Ziggler always tuned up the band? Or is that like a new thing? Because I know he, like, he had a thing with Shawn Michaels recently. I think he attacked him because Shawn Michaels was the KFC. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know, that's just a thing in my brain for some reason. I don't remember Ziggler tuning up the band. Maybe he has, maybe they just haven't mentioned it before. Uh, but the match ended with uh, Rude out-healing Ziggler 
because Ziggler tried to roll him up and use the tights, and then Rude reversed it and rolled him up and held the tights. That's pretty interesting, because um, they're both heels, but Ziggler's definitely just been a dick lately, so I kind of feel like he was the heel going into this, but El Bobby cheated to win, so Ziggler still... I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that Bobby's a better wrestler than him. That just means that Bobby cheated to win. So, this feud isn't over. And then afterwards, Ziggler hit Bobby with a zigzag. He's pissed. You know he is. Um, I think all of us, except Brooks and Kim, picked Rude to win. So it's now me at four, Brian at four, Brooks at two, and Kim at five. And then we had the most anxiety-stricken... I've ever been at watching a wrestling match. The Hell in a Cell match between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. And, man, this is what vignettes are for. Because you forget certain things. And KO had cut a promo earlier in the day talking about how Shane McMahon was the bad guy because he abused his power. And how, you know, that was affecting KO's family. You know, forget forget Shane's family and how, oh, I hurt your dad on TV and blah, I hurt his family. Um, it hurt Kevin's family because Shane was abusing his power and threatening KO's job, basically. And, um, and just about, like, this started, I didn't realize this, but this started back in the draft. Because Kevin wasn't uh, put on SmackDown. And he wasn't happy about that. And then during the Superstar shakeup, he got put on SmackDown. And was saying, you know, oh yeah, now I'm here. Now you want me. You ha you're forced to have me. And basically they didn't like his attitude is why they didn't draft him. He's like, oh, how's my attitude now? So that's where that shit started. And I did not realize that. So good on the vignette guys for that. And I totally forgot about this. But Kevin said that Shane's family would have been better off if he had died in the helicopter crash that Shane had a while back. Damn, Kevin, damn. That was brutal. Um, so this is a false Count Anywhere Hell in a Cell match. Uh, I don't know if like the older ones were not false Count Anywhere. I have to go back and watch that. That's interesting when they add things like that. Because you don't realize we're like, oh, that probably should have been pinned there. And or that should have happened like that or whatever. But, uh, yeah. I guess I never realized that Hell in a Cell matches weren't false Count Anywhere. Basically is what I'm saying. Uh, and the match started outside. Uh, they just beat the shit out of each other. There were some really great spots. Uh, Kevin scraping Shane's face in the cell right in front of Shane's kids. His kids are troopers, man. I mean, obviously they know their dad's not really getting hurt. But at the same time, he really is getting his face scraped into uh, fencing. So, yeah. That's not... Great. Really not. Um, and then there was a, a great spot. Kevin taking out Shane. And the cameraman looks right at Kevin. He says, did you get a good shot? And that's the Kevin that we all know and love. The Kevin Steen, uh, even. And so I hope... And they do let him do that. I just... I kind of want it to happen more. And it does happen a lot. So I shouldn't complain about that. Um... And one thing, speaking of Kevin Steen, does Shane McMahon wrestle like a fucking indie wrestler or what? Dude used a pump kick. Uh, he used like a tilt the world DDT. And then he tried a shooting star press. Like, God, of all people who have become such incredible wrestlers, Shane wasn't bad, you know, back in the day or even recently. But what the hell, who was training this dude? That he gets exponentially better every single match. It's really incredible. Um, all night we've had We Want Tables chance, And Kevin Owens and Shane delivered. Um, <laughs> God, and that was a crazy spot. Because Kevin, Kevin got Shane up on the table. Kevin went up on the ring apron. And I think Corey Graves pointed out that Kevin was foaming at the mouth. And holy shit, he was. There was just shit coming out of his mouth. Just drooling. He was just, he wanted to kill Shane. 
And then he cannonballed right through the table. Shane moved. And that looked like a nasty spot. And then Shane proceeded to beat the shit out of Kevin with half of a table as if it was chair. A chair. It was chair. Her. Um, and then, past that, brought in the signature trash can. And coast to coast. That, you know, there's that whole thing with wrestling is you gotta get your shit in. That should be a spot that gets in every single Shane McMahon hardcore match. Because I love that spot. So great. And then they ended up on top of the cell. And there were many, many spots of, you know, powerbomb, suplex, uh, Russian leg sweep. I feel like... So one of two things happened here. Either that cell was supposed to break during Kevin's powerbomb. Or they were just teasing us the whole time. Well, I think they may have been just teasing us the whole time. Good on you guys for that. Because I didn't breathe the entire time they are on top of the goddamn cell. That is such a legitimately just tense feeling of, oh my god, one of these guys are going to go through the cell any second. What's going to happen afterwards? Um, Kevin decided that he didn't want to be on the cell anymore. Um, they went down and they fought for a little bit. Uh, then Kevin ended up putting Shane on the American announce table, I believe. Climbed up and looked like he was going to swanton bomb off the cell. Could not bring himself to do it. One of two things happened here. Kevin could not get the balls to do it. Don't blame him whatsoever because I couldn't do it either. Totally understand, Kevin. Or that spot was just to, to give them a little bit of a rest. Because Shane then climbed up. Uh, they fought a little bit more. And then Kevin tried to escape. They, Shane followed him and slammed his face into the cell. And Kevin fell through the announce table. Kind of like uh, Dean and Seth did. Like a year or two years back? Two years, I think? Uh, and actually, there's a video of them two watching that match on the WWE YouTube cha network, channel, whatever. You should totally go watch, because that commentary of some of the guys who are in the match is just, it's great. That was great. Um, and finally, we had Shane laying out Kevin on a, an announce table, climbing up to the top. And Shane McMahon, if you're listening, bud... Stop jumping off the cell. <laughs> you don't have to do it. It's like he needs to do it. I don't know why. Like, I understand he feels the need to do the coast to coast. That's cool. That's even got to hurt. Because I'm pretty sure he... Does he do a front drop kick and land on his butt? On his back, even? That's got to hurt. It does. Um... So Shane is up top. He's thinking about it. He does the whole cross thing, prayer, whatever. And he jumps. And Kevin's gone. <laughs> and there was literally... There was a moment of like... Where'd he go? Because even someone in the announce table was like, Where'd Kevin go? And I was like, Yeah, where did he go? What the hell? How did that happen? And come to find out... We'll come to find out in a second. The way Shane McMahon hit that table, he thudded and bounced into one of the chairs. He might be legitimately injured. He's hurt. I know that for a fact. There's no way... Both those guys are hurt. That's just a fact. Shane might be off TV for a while. Shane should be off TV for a while. And Daniel should be really taking over the show now. Um, but come to find out, Sami Zayn pulled Kevin away from the table and Shane just went through it. And one of the camera shots is, uh, just looking at Kevin, looking at the back of his head, pretty much from where Corey Graves and all them were. And you see Sammy pull Kevin up and then just from out of frame... Shane comes in and goes through the table. And it is 
God, it is like... I've never watched Faces of Death, but that's what it's got to be like. Because, good God, that just looks so bad. And, yeah, Sami Zayn pulled Kevin away. And Sami Zayn did not seem happy about it. The EMTs were checking on Shane. We we had that for a little bit. And then Sami got them out of the way. Dragged Kevin over and put him on top of Shane. One, two, three. Match was over. What the hell? Even, so, Kimberly fell asleep. Kimberly works a lot. Um, she was go- originally going to be on the show, but she she wasn't able to. And she asked me, you know, what happened between Kevin and Shane? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. You're going to see. <laughs> so I, I queued it up again and had her watch it. And she went, w- wait, wh- why? Why is Sammy doing that? <laughs> she's legitimately confused. Cause she knows the, the, the history. She's She knows about El Generico. She knows about Kevin Steen. We've been fans for a long time. Kevin Owens is her favorite wrestler. But Sami Zayn and Kevin, since NXT, have hated each other. And it's very confusing. I don't know what's happening. I mean, what does this mean for Sami's future? He just potentially killed Shane McMahon? Is he going to get fired? Is he going to have to join the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club? Um, is Kevin going to come to his aid? Probably not. Kevin's an asshole. So I doubt he's going to come to his aid. <clears throat> but, man, this is so confusing. And it is nice to see that WWE, and they've, they've given little nuggets of this, but they care about Owens and Zayn's past <clears throat> to the point where... We've gotten little bits of feuds with them that have been great. And now this has happened. And, man, this is just very confusing. And I can't wait to see where it goes. Is it Tuesday yet? It's not. I'm recording this on a Monday. I should have been recording this last night, but I didn't. Uh, so, that was Hell in a Cell. Shane should be off TV for a while. We're going to find out what happens with Sammy now. We're going to find out how this affects Zayn and Owens. I mean, I want to see Zayn and Owens become a tag team. We also don't need them in a tag team right now. So I don't know. I I, I, Actually, the thing I hope... Ultimately, I hope that the thing that we get from this is that Sami Zayn is elevated into the spotlight because he is my favorite wrestler. Um, I have an El Generico mask signed by him. You know, because him and El Generico were pretty good friends, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's just... Oh, man, this is really confusing. <laughs> like, I'm thinking about it again, and I'm like, I don't know where this is going to go. And I love that. So, overall, I will say Hell in a Cell was a great show. Uh, the only low point being the women's match, because it was really sloppy. And, you know, it could have been better. So if it wasn't for that, this would have been one of the best pay-per-views. And AJ Styles said that on Talking Smack, that this was one of the best pay-per-views of the year. Which was like, oh, uh, okay, yeah, we all agree. So that was kind of an interesting shot to Raw, because No Mercy was real fucking boring. I would tell you to go listen to that podcast, but it was not great. <laughs> it was like, it was not a good pay-per-view at all. It was fun to see Braun and Brock, that was it. But that's go back and listen to that if you want. At least listen to the end and listen to us not being happy about it. Just if you want to get our opinion on it. But this has been the Future Heels podcast. Uh, special one-man Future Heel show. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. You can find me on Twitter at Best of the Realm. I'm on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Best of the Realm Gaming. Find me on YouTube at Best of the Realm. Twitch.tv slash Best of the Realm. You can find my content on FutureVillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. Keep an eye out. We do have the Future Villains podcast. There's going to be a special one this week. Me and Bearded Gaming Entertainment. He's back doing another podcast with me. And we're playing Spin Tires. So there's going to be an audio version. And then there's going to be a video version. The full version will be up on the Future Villains website. And then it will be broken up into episodes on my channel if you prefer to watch it that way. 
um, with a bonus episode at the end, by the way. So thank you for listening, guys. Uh, Brian will be back next week. Hopefully Brooks will be back. Um, he's not back for sure for at least another two, three months. Uh, so I, I'm sorry, you know, all the big Brooks fans, but he'll be back soon. And I have some special episodes planned for when he gets back. So thank you for listening, guys. Let's stop.